everyone. Scott Hansen here from NFL Red Zone. I hope you're checking out one hour of Five Yard Rush, one of the best podcasts on NFL football in the UK. Uh, hi, Rush Nation. Here we are. Another uh, another week into this. Uh, another opportunity to go through and break down the games. Good game last night with the 49ers and the Seahawks. A um, bit more high scoring, I think, than anyone kind of expected. So it was really good to see uh, the 49ers sort of clear up and... Um, and sort of show a little bit more about why they are the team they are. And and, and again, I think I called the game right in terms of I thought the 49ers would control the time of possession in the game. They got up and they did that. Obviously, you had a freak moment with the return and then uh, kind of Walker's going to bring this a little bit closer and then the, the 49ers sort of ran away with it in the fourth quarter. But really, really good game. Definitely go back and give that a watch. Uh, if if you get time and, and can definitely do that, um, we've got seven games to to go through now in terms of the um, uh, fantasy stats and, and information here. So we're going to be breaking through these relatively quickly. Uh, a little bit of context on each game. We're going to start with the late slate: Broncos versus Chargers. Chargers favored by three points. You over under thirty five and a half. I know both of these offenses are bad, but it's very rare you'll see an over under of. Uh, 35 and a half. And I guess, I guess, you know, I can't really argue. I think the over will get hit here. I think whenever I see a, a over under that low, I tend to think that the over will, will come in more often than not. I think it's a good opportunity. Maybe it, this is why I don't bet. Right. So I could be full skull. Um, Charges by three. Uh, given, given the Broncos' defense, I think that's probably a little harsh. I actually think this is a really close game. I think this could go either way. Um, but it will be a low-scoring affair. So for fantasy football, this will be a bit of a rough one. Um, I'm not starting any of the quarterbacks in, in this one uh, by any stretch of the imagination. I realized I was on the wrong um, wrong screen there. Um Apologies for that. So, yeah, I won't be starting any of the quarterbacks in this one. Um, as I said in the start sits, I think Justin Herbert, not his fault, just in terms of the way stylistically they play, they're not great. Um, he, he's been no better than QB 18 at any point this season. Bo Nix is my quarterback 24 in a week, and Justin Herbert, my quarterback 26, has been a really rough ride. Uh, for both these quarterbacks so far this season and, and rarely showing any fantasy output. DK w, uh, J.K. Dobbins is probably my highest rated fantasy player in this game. Um, I have him at uh, RB17, Javante Williams at RB25. So I think he's touching that RB uh, ceiling there uh, into RB2 territory. I've got Gus Edwards at 40, but he's questionable, so I could probably even move him down. He might not even play in this game. Janelle McLaughlin at 42, he's just a bit of a um, uh, bench fodder at this point. You can let him go. Um, He's definitely done more than a handcuff. Uh, and then the wide receivers in this game, there isn't that much um, to really hook on to here. Uh, Lab McConkie is my leading wide receiver. I've got him at 31 and Courtland Sutton at 35. Both of those are definitely uh, playable, uh, but I'm not starting Quinton Johnson this week. He has got Pat Satan and shadow coverage. I don't really like that one at all. Nor do I uh, like the tight ends in this one either. I've got them so far ranked down. I'm still scrolling. I think Hayden Hurst is my leading tight receiver, uh, tight end. This one, it's tight end 29. So definitely can fade those. I do have both these defenses in the top seven. Chargers at four, Broncos at seven. So you can definitely fire up both those defenses. It's going to be a very low scoring game, as the Vegas lines it tells you. Um, and then I'm not really trusting the kickers all that much in this game. Will Lutz is all the way down at 22. Um, and I guess, you know, if you're at Cameron Dicker, I've got him at 12, so that puts him in start range, but uh, um, I think most people probably have got rid of him by now. But if you have him, then, you know, he's fine. He's not going to hurt you uh, too much this week, that's for sure. Um, don't let us pull up there. Apologies. Um, just scroll like that. Right. Uh, Raiders and Steelers, another low scoring game. Uh, Steelers favored by three, and the over unders at 36 and a half. So, again, starting this late slate with two very low scoring games here. And again, it's it's almost a very similar story. Aiden McConnell's in at quarterback. This is going to be a really difficult watch. Um, it's very difficult to see much offensive production, especially with a line like this. I actually think this is one of the few times I think the line could be pretty good on such a low score. So, I'm not really. All in on any of these fantasy players in this one. Uh, Justin Fields at 13, uh, quarterback 13. He's definitely a 
uh, a start for me this week, and you can feel pretty good about that. But the rest of the supporting cast, Najee Harris is at 21, Alexander Mattison at 29, like technically start range. I don't only, I think more due to injuries and buys than anything else. I don't think you'd be expecting great production out of them. Uh, Jacoby Minot Myers is probably the best um, output in this game. He's at uh, wide receiver 20 with no Devontae Adams who were waiting to be traded. Pickens is at 30. I do think he's got better days ahead, but I don't think this one, uh, this week would be the one. And Trey Tucker at 43, probably a bit optimistic there that I think he's going to get some additional volume from Aiden O'Connell, but um, I can see me moving him down probably a little bit as we go along. The only real defense, uh, offensive stud here is Brock Bass. He's my tight end one this week. You can fire him up. Pat Freemuth is eight. He is questionable at this current point, but I do think he'll go. I think he's in for a good week as well, so I like the tight end in this one. I have the Steelers as my number one ranked defense this week. Um, but I have the Raiders for 15. They're a sneaky play. I um, There is some upside there, but Justin Fields hasn't turned the ball over all that much. Um, so I, I'm not quite all in on that one. Um, Boswell I have as my kicker seven this week. I think there'll be a lot of field goals in this one. I think you can feel pretty good about that. Uh, I have Daniel Carlson. Um, all the way down at 21. So he is someone that you can, I would say not really, but I think if they get into field goal rolls, they could be the only way they score points. So uh, he is someone that could really start to step up and, and go through uh, the rankings. So I've got him outside, but he could be a sneaky play this week uh, looking at that one. Um, right, F Panthers at Falcons. Falcons favoured by six. Over under set 47. That's a high over under for this game, especially that the, the Chargers, I've just read a script one time, especially if the Panthers' offense has not been brilliant. It's been a bit hit and miss. It's kind of giving some a lot of faith there to Andy Dalton. I'm not sure I'm giving it uh, to him in this one. So uh, I like the Falcons by six or more, but the over under 47 seems a bit of a stretch. Um, as for the quarterbacks in this one, I do think that the Panthers are going to struggle uh, a lot in this game. It doesn't match up well for them. I expect the Falcons to improve their record. Um, and with that, because of that, I think they'll control a lot with the run. So I have Kirk Cousins at, at 15 and Andy Dalton at 23. I just think Cousins, if he doesn't get the points early, this could be a bit of a long afternoon for fantasy owners for him. But I do think it will come back round and be better for, for him. I just, it depends. You always need the, the, the Panthers to keep this one close to keep uh, to keep Cousins uh, a fantasy interest. And if it's not, it's a blowout. I think they'll hand it off and just let him fight another day. Um, Chuba Hubbard, I really like this week. I think this is a great opportunity for him. I have him as my running back 10. B. John Robinson carrying an injury. I think he'll go. Is at my running back 14. But Ty Orange is at, at running back 30. I think he's going to get a good amount of work, especially as I think he's going to get up early. Um, and the Falcons will get up early and they'll use him to sort of run the timeout. So I think he, he will be in line for some good points. Uh, this week for sure. Um, Drake London, I've got 11 after his great performance last week. Deontay Johnson at 12, although he is questionable. Darnell Mooney at 26. All those are must-start plays for me. Ray Ray McLeod at 41. In PPR, I like him a lot more. In standard, I'm, I'm not in on him at all. Xavier Leggett at 48. I think you're better off sitting him this week. Um, and then we get to the tight ends here, and I have Kyle Pitts at 11, and I don't feel good about it if I'm really honest with you, but I kind of struggle to think where else I can put him. Uh, and Tredavion Sanders at 19, definitely don't start him this week. Uh, as for the DSTs, um, I don't, I've got the Falcons at 13. I might revise them up to, to 12 over the Colts. Um, you can see that one on the screen. The Panthers, I'm not in on at all. They're at 27 this week. Uh, Young Hoku, I definitely think it'll be a good week for him. He's my kicker too. Uh, and I like him this week quite a bit. So, yeah. You're definitely starting him most weeks. Eddie Pinheiro at 24. Don't need to worry about him all that much. Now we get to some Titanic games. Uh, Cowboys versus the Lions. This should be a really good one. The over-under set 52. This is prescribed to be a shootout with the Lions favored by three. I can't argue these lines at all. I think these are absolutely spot on. I think the Lions will grind out a victory. Um, I don't trust this Cowboys defense at all, but I do think they'll make it difficult. I'm a little bit concerned about Jared Goff this week from a fantasy production perspective, but I think he's got the weapons and the talent to get it done. Um, so where I've got them this week, I have Goff all the way down at 18. Again, I just don't think this is a great matchup for him. We haven't seen lots of great production from him this season. There is a bit of a concern here, but with this being a shootout, I like that Prescott this week. He is at nine, uh, quarterback nine this week, so feel pretty good firing uh, him up. 
Well, we get into the running backs now, and I have Gibbs and Montgomery pretty much back to back at seven and eight, two running back ones on the same team. Uh, but that is what we're seeing. I think this is how they're going. Detroit are going to win this game. They're going to win it on the ground, pound it uh, regular and often on 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 the ground, uh, and use them as well just through uh, short pass ranges uh, and get plays that way. So. I really like both these players this week. Rico Dowdle was at 20. He is getting a more progressive role, as we talked about last night. Definitely subscribe and apply, apply into him uh, this week. Um, CD Lamb, wide receiver two. Again, the shootout, I think it's good. And what Ross Brown have just outside the top 12 at 13. He's got a difficult matchup this week. I think it's going to cap his upside a little bit uh, in the slot. So a um, little bit concerned. Not concerned, just, I mean, he's a start, but I just don't think you're going to get the high ceiling this week. I have Wondell Robinson at 25. Jameson Williams at 33. He also has tough coverage, but I expect him to still be fantasy relevant as a flex play. Jalen Tolbert at 36. He's seeing a high uh, a high increased game as well. So I'm definitely all in on him and seeing his production come up significantly more while Brandon Cook sits on IR. Um, Jake Ferguson is my tight end four this week. Um, Sam Laporta tight end nine. I think there's some good days ahead for Sam Laporta if you draft him, but it is going to take a little bit of time to get there. Um, as for the DSTs in this one, uh, fading them both pretty significantly. The Cowboys down at 24, Detroit Lions down at 19. Definitely not a game you want to start the DSTs here. Uh, but Brandon Aubrey is my kicker one. Uh, and Jake Bates is, he's at 16, but to be honest, I can see him having a better week than that. Um, so I probably might revise him up a little bit as well uh, as we get through uh, the rest of uh, the rankings as we get to my final rankings of, of the week. Um, Giants and Bengals. Um, so the Giants and Bengals, Bengals are favored only by three and a half, which I know they're one and four, but I actually think they're a better team than that. Um, and I don't think the Giants have been playing particularly well, but they've been grinding out results. Um, and I do think it'll be a good week for Daniel Jones. I <laughs> It's basically this game will hinges on how bad the Bengals D is. And, and if they're anything like they were last week, that could be that could be pretty close line, three and a half. It, my gut tells me that I think, and, and how I've seen the games play out, that the Bengals should win this one by six. But, you know, we are where we are. Over under 47 and a half. Good chance the over gets smashed. If, for the Giants to win the game, the over actually needs to be hit. Um if it's under, then I would expect the Bengals to do it because the defensive have held on and, and done their job. Um, so the quarterback play this week is important. I have Joe Burrow at five and Daniel Jones at six. I think Daniel Jones is going to get some good relief getting out of the pocket. Almost just also watching what um, Lamar Jackson did last week. And I think they'll dial up some design runs for him this week and he'll get some good production on the ground on top of what he does in the air. And I think especially if, if Neighbors is back, if Neighbors is not back, then there's a long way back for the 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 Giants to get into this um, and that will make it significantly difficult. So um, that's, that is one sort of precursor to the, to this discussion here is neighbors at the moment. So isn't practicing. He might miss the game. I need to keep an eye on that one. Chase Brown, I have as running back 12. I don't think they're going to risk that Moss this week. I don't think they need to. Zach, Chase Brown's been really, really good in that limited role he's had, and he's been really explosive. I, I really like him to, to do a good job here. Um, so I've got him at 12. I've got Tyron Tracy at 18. Um, I've got this on the on the point that Devin Singletree is kind of not really fit. I've got Devin Singletree down at 66. That he'll get a little bit of work. Uh, but I think Tyron Tracy probably starts as the lead back. That's kind of how I have it right now. Um, but we'll see what happens as we as we go through the next um few uh days to see how the practice goes. There are 21 wide receivers to the question, but Malik Davis is one of those. Um, at this moment, he is my wide receiver one, but I feel pretty comfortable reversing that if he's not there and moving Darius Slayton up to a low-end wide receiver two. Jamar Chase is my wide receiver three. T. Higgins, my wide receiver eight. Both of those uh, players will have really good weeks this week. Wondell Robinson, my wide receiver 25. Good target, hung uh, target hungry player. Darius Slayton will all come down to the neighbors. If neighbors is fit, Darius Slayton's my wide receiver 56. If he's not, he jumps up 20, probably actually jumps up 30 spots. Uh, that's how I see this one going. Um, the tight ends in this game, not overly relevant. I wouldn't be starting any of them. I wouldn't be starting Eric all this week, despite the injury um, to Mike Gazicki. Um, I think Mike Gazicki's probably go. I think they probably do cannibalize each other. If Gazicki doesn't go, all probably slides in about tight end 17 so it's still not desperate to really start him if i'm truly honest with you um and look at the dsts here um 
And again, I'm not seeing any real certainty on this one. The, the Giants at 26 um, and the Bengals, I don't have much better at 18, so I'm fading those. But you can definitely fire up Evan McPherson. He'll be a good bet this week to, to, line, up, to line up on. He's uh, my kicker, six. Um, and I'm not trusting... The Giants kicker all too much here. Greg Jovis is at, Greg Joseph even is at 15, so I'll be staying away from that. Jets Bills Sunday night football. Uh, Bills favored by two and a half. Think that's harsh. I know they've been bad the last two weeks, but the Jets are an absolute mess. So I, I don't really see the fired coach. Uh, they played in London last week. I think they're fatigued. I've talked about this one already. I can't see a world in which um, the Jets kind of do better than that. Uh, in here, so I, you know, I take uh, bills and the points here over under 41. <sighs> Probably feels about right given the D, but um, wouldn't surprise me if the over sort of crept in here. Um, but I am fading Josh Allen this week, he is a sit for me. He's all the way down at, at quarterback 17. Unless he runs in the touchdowns himself, he's going to struggle to break the top 15 this week. Uh, passing options limited, Khalil Shakir is potentially out. Um, and they're really struggling to get things going on, on offense as well. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm probably because I am feeding into the over-under being at 40, 41, which is where I was sort of doing these ranks. I'm kind of thinking, okay, it's going to be a real defensive game and the scores might even be defensive scores. So that's where I'm kind of out on this. So Josh Allen at 17, Aaron Rodgers at, at 20 this week. Definitely. I mean, you have to start Josh Allen, but just be prepared. It's going to be a tough uh, a tough week for him. Um, I have James Cook all the way down at six, um, but there is some concern whether or not he'll make the game. I've got him as he is playing, but we'll see what happens. Brees Hall at 15. We need a Brees Hall breakout game part two at some point. Um, I don't think this week will be this week. I think it'll be the following week. Brayden Allen at 35 will handcuff some of that role. Ty Johnson will be the guy to pick up if James Cook doesn't go. So go and add him off your waiver wise if you haven't already got him. Garrett Wilson is my leading receiver in this and wide receiver 32, followed by Alan Lazard at 37. Khalil Shakir, I don't think goes. He's currently my 40, but I think I'm actually going to probably pull him from the ranks. It really doesn't look good for him to go this week. Kim Coleman would then be my leading receiver. He'll probably jump up into the late 40s. Um, Curtis Samuel, Mac Hollins. Mac Hollins has uh, Source Gardner as coverage and he's questionable. I'm staying well away. Thanks very much. Um, looking at the defenses here, I actually think both defenses will do reasonably well in this game. Um, I have the Jets at, at 14, I have the Bills at nine. Um, both are in start range for sure. And then as for the kickers, I think this is going to be a game that could be decided by the kickers. So Tyler Bass at 11. Uh, is a good bet for me, but I have Zerline all the way down at 26. I'm just not trusting the, the Jets' offense in any way, shape, or form. And we move to Monday Night Football, and we've got the C. Um, sorry, that was Monday Night Football. I've <laughs> I, I got my list made up. So Jets, Bills is Monday Night Football. Uh, Giants, Bengals is Sunday Night Football. So we have gone through the whole slate. It got thrown. The list that was on has moved the Thursday night game to the bottom. I was like, hey, we've done the game. So we, uh, yeah, surprisingly managed to get <laughs> do that uh, uh, a little bit quicker than, than expected. Apologies for that. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much all you need to know uh, for the games uh, this week. I've just realized I've been clicking the wrong tab that will throw you all off. So I'll quickly show the kicker rankings as I might not have gone through all of those quickly. Don't forget the Elimination League has kicked off. You can go ahead and sign up for that. £7.50 donation and some great prizes in there. I'm going to try and get some more prizes thrown in there, but there is some guaranteed prizes in there for all of you. So please do sign up to that. Link will be in here. My matchups column is in there as well. So do that, and there'll be links to the rankings. I'm going to publish some rankings later on today on the back of some injury news and training news. So do keep up to date with that one. Um, there's the last of the kickers. Um, so these are as they stand right now, but again, they can be subject to change and moving them. So just keep an eye on any changes I do make uh, to these rankings. I will publish them again on uh, Saturday. Um, and then the final ones will just be for Patreons, which you can sign up to Patreon forward slash or patreon.com forward slash five for rush uh, minimum of three pounds per month and you can get through and get access to all the paid content but they will have the rankings up there and they are free for people so patreon.com forward slash five for rush you can download their, their free posts for rankings you can find them there but that's going to do it thank you so much for tuning in have a really good week i look forward to seeing how you all get on uh, and we push forward to week seven hopefully see some of you at the london games as well but until then rush nation don't forget as always keep rushing